Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Uh, yes, we are a webinar. You can call us that. We won't be offended by it. Um, we uh, ho uh, broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, the show is free and open to anyone to watch, and the sessions are all recorded, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's just fine. You can always go to our website and see the recordings of um, in our archives of all the shows that we've had on um, we're in the beginning of our sixth year here, so we have quite a few recordings in there. Uh, we do a mixture of things, your presentations, book reviews, mini training sessions, basically anything that will be of interest to librarians, we um, want to have it on the show. And we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do sessions, but we also bring in guest speakers as we have this morning. Um, on the line with us today is Jake Rundle. He's from um, Hastings, Nebraska's uh, Hastings Public Library. Hello, Jake. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. And he's got some cool things to show us. He's got himself, uh, their library got a hold of Google Glass. And so he's going to tell us uh, how they pulled it off and what they've been doing with it. So I'll hand over to you now, Jake. Go ahead. Take it away. All righty. Well, good morning, all. As Krista said, my name is Jake. I'm the collections librarian at the Hastings Public Library. Um, what that means is essentially I am acquisitions and cataloging and um, outreach and exploration and joy and fun um, and all good things. So <laughs> Sounds like um, a lot of us. <laughs> right before Christmas. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, so right before Christmas, uh, a friend of mine had the opportunity to purchase himself uh, a pair of Google Glass. And when he bought it, he got three invites. And so I'm trolling Facebook, and I see this, hey, I've got Google Glass invites. Who's serious about wanting them? And my first thought is, oh, my gosh, I want that for me. Me, 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 me. Uh, and then I thought, well, if it weren't just for me and the library bought them, then one, I could play with them, and two, so could the rest of the city. So I went to Amy, my boss, and said, hey, Amy, I have this opportunity to purchase Google Glass. What do you think? She kind of looks at me with a slant eye and is like, why? Um, and I hadn't even formally put together what I was going to do with it. I basically sold her on the, the point that this is technology that is unavailable to most people in Hastings. So she gave me the green light. And I messaged my friend, and he sent me an invite. And then two days later, I got an email from Google, and they said, hey, do you want to buy this? And we um, paid for it with a special Kino fund. Uh, every couple of years, the Kino fund gets so high, and they pay it out to a, a, any number of the city, um, city budget line items. And so the library happened to fall into it this year. So we have $20,000 extra dollars in collection money this year that we had designated for non-traditional and different stuff. So it wasn't specifically set aside for books necessarily. Um, we've used that to buy into our Hoopla, which is a streaming audio and music service, and we use it to, um, we bought some GoPro cameras and some other not book stuff. So we paid for it with that, and then they overnight it to you, so the next day it shows up, and We've been playing with it ever since. Uh, so truthfully, basically, the opportunity did present itself, and it is really cool. So the basics of Glass is it captures video, it captures um, pictures, it does Google search with an internet or a wireless network. Um, it'll give you driving directions, um, again, with a wireless network and a phone. So you need to be using your cell phone to broadcast a Wi-Fi network, and you need to Bluetooth to your phone so it can talk to your phone and get directions. Um, an instant message and an email. Those are the five things that it really comes with stock. Um, and those five things can be fun enough. If you can get the driving directions figured out, it took me a while. Um, but it's really kind of neat to be driving, and it'll talk to um, the little um, speaker behind you and say, in 100 feet, turn left, which is what your phone does. But you get uh, the map overlay in front of your face, so you don't have to look down and away from traffic to see where you're going. Um, as for other apps, yes, they do exist. Um, no, there's not really a formal app store for them. I will show you kind of what the app store looks like right now. Um, everything available for Glass is either free or um, kind of on your own ability to load it into Glass. 
much of the much of the app stuff is not developed necessarily by app companies, um, but by people who are tech savvy and really enjoy cracking open apps, working on programming, and then sideloading them into their glass. Um, so there's a really neat video um, step by step on how to load Google Sky into your glass app so that when you go outside on a Wi-Fi network and you look up at the stars, it's going to map out for you constellations and use your GPS to find out exactly where you are and exactly what you're seeing. Uh, haven't done that yet because that requires me to like get into the droid kernel and other tech stuff that is well beyond my my ability to do. Uh, but I will show you the App Store in a second and you can kind of understand. Um, and really what we do with it uh, at the library is patron exploration and experimentation. Um, like we kind of said at the top, not many people have the opportunity to play with this. People know it exists. Uh, people see it on TV. Um, Google just put out their designer frames so you don't look like um, something from Star Trek when you put your glass on now. You can look like a, a cute hipster with wood frames. Um, and really, it's, it's been about taking it to schools and taking it to patrons and letting patrons come in and just try it on. Just put it on their face and be like, oh, that's so cool. Or um, there's about 15% of the population that's like, that's too weird, that's too weird, I can't. No, I can't. Um, they see the screen in front of their eye and it just wigs it out. Um, and that's, you know, that's a thing that happens too. For the, the first two days we were playing with it at the library when we first got it, it was kind of a learning curve um, to have all this information at your eye and not on a screen in front of you. Um, so it's, it's, it's weird to some people and I totally get that. Uh, so I will show you the App Store first um, because that was first and then I will show you some of the things we've done with it. Uh, so if you'll excuse me, I have to pop out of one place and move into another. So everything you can do with your glass is controlled with either a My Glass app or via this web browser google.com slash my glass and so this tells you your device info you can add your contacts um, you can turn on and off the apps that are going right now so uh, we have a simple custom uh, compass app that came um, as one of the things you could turn on so you you put on the glasses and you say okay glass start a compass and then you have a compass and it'll you know tell you if you're facing northeast or not um, Google Hangouts, I will show you later on in this, dem in this presentation. It is Google's, um, Google's answer to Skype, essentially. It's video, um, video um, conferencing. Um, Google is the search option. We have it uh, connected to our Facebook and to our Twitter. Kitch Me is really um, kind of a fun one. You look at recipes from the Kitch Me website, and then you send them to a synced glass device. So you can search by ingredient or you can search by cook time or you can search by easy, medium, or hard. And then it will send you recipes straight to your eyepiece. So all you have to do is swipe forward um, to play with, to see the next step in your recipe process. And YouTube, um, which allows us to share videos that we've made instantly to YouTube as opposed to going through Google Plus. Uh, now I say going through Google Plus because everything you do on the glass is defaulted to go to a Google Plus page. Google Plus, if you don't know, is Google's kind of version of Facebook. It's their social networking site. Um, it's also kind of handy because it does connect into everything else that Google has. Um, so the Libraries Plus site, where most of, where all of the pictures and video go that we've taken, um, it's plus.google.com slash the plus sign Hastings L I B E N E U S 68901. That is our our hardline address. You can skip all this number junk. That'll get you there. Or you can just go to the library's website, Hastings.lib.ne.us, and there's a plus button in the top right hand corner. Um, if you want to go exploring while we're while we're talking. Um, and I'll just, um, Jake, so I just want to let everyone know, too, I'll just, um, Jake, I just let everyone know too. Yep. Um, that uh, while um, 
As Jake's going through this, any websites like this link, I'm um, saving into our uh, the Library Commission's Delicious account, as we always do. So all the links will be available in the show notes after the show. Thank you, Krista. Mm -hmm. I always forget that. <laughs> uh, so we can post, but we really don't because we already use social networking and Twitter and Facebook. And so adding a third place that we actually put content other than stuff made with glass is a little tricky. Um, but it is where all of our pictures go. So if you go to photos, um, this is all of the photos that we have taken um, with the glass. And if you go to posts, there are also some more photos that, um, because the glass syncs to my work email and not to the public library page, there are um, a couple things that before we, we downloaded things directly to um, a computer and then re-uploaded them to the right thing. So there is, let's see here, the middle school field trips. Like uh, these are originally shared by me as my work ID and then uh, we repost them here so you can see them and play with them but they're not going to show up on um, on our pictures page. Uh, so photos, it takes photos, it takes really nice photos actually. Um, there is no zoom feature, so any photo you take, um, I do recommend that you have some sort of um, photo imaging, um, cropping, you know, not the Photoshop, obviously, if you don't need to spend all the money, um, <clears throat> but something to crop, because sometimes, like, for instance, I have more selfies than I know what to do with now, because I'm always partially in any picture when I'm teaching a new group of people how to use the thing. Uh, usually the first thing I do is have them take a picture just so they can see what it looks like to have a picture being taken in front of their eye. Um, I've taken to just making a pirate face, which is the uh, standard Google Glass um, face shot where one eye is closed because you really can't see very well when you first put it on. Uh, I don't believe I have any because I decided to stop putting pictures of myself on the Internet. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but we um, we had an Explorer class in January where people came, and then a lot of it has been going out, <clears throat> excuse me, and about to places um, and letting people just try it on. So the middle school had a science fair, and we went as judges, the librarians did, and um, you wear Google Glass, and the middle school kids are like, oh, is that glass? That's so cool. Can I try it on? So, um, again, see, there's half of me, always, and forever. Uh, the other thing that does really well is YouTube videos. Um, there are some people that I had to judge and some people I just wanted to go and see. Um, and I will play these because um, the middle school stuff is all a minute long and that's awkward. And my speakers don't really broadcast up to my microphone for you to hear. but. Um, this is my favorite one, and glass defaults at 10 seconds of video, so these are short and sweet, if it plays. Come on, oh, there we go. This is public library. Oh. <laughs> That didn't work like I wanted it to. I heard some sound, but didn't see any video come through. Yeah. Sound came through. Video did mm. not. <laughs> but uh, you can also go to YouTube and search Hastings Public Library. We have a YouTube channel where all these also live. It's just that Google Plus and YouTube live together now um, in the same, the same place, kind of. There we go. <laughs> the most excited kid ever and that is why it's my favorite because he saw that his sister was making a video and so his instant his first thought was I should be in front of this um, and so he really tried his best to do that um, but uh, we haven't really let a lot of other people other people Mainly, I take these out um, 
and play around with them and show them off. Um, and that's mainly because some of the librarians um, don't know how to use them yet at Hastings Public Library um, or are just leery of holding $1,600 of technology in their hand. Um, and we don't check them out because of a um, the terms and conditions of Google kind of make it uh, waffly. I don't. I mean, that, it's it's kind of in the legal gray area to check them out actually um, to another person. So what we do is just take them around and show them off. Probably um, something that they haven't thought about yet themselves, like thought ahead to that possible right. situation. <laughs> And right now, um, to my knowledge, there are um, a bunch, I can only say a bunch because I only know this from the second hand, is that people who went to ALA Midwinter, there were a lot of librarians with glass, but there were librarians who owned it personally. Um, I know of only one other library in, this, in the country that has glass available for people to play with. Um, that's the Arapahoe County Library District in Colorado. Um, so we are kind of a small tribe of libraries that are playing with technology and letting people play with technology. Um, and if anyone happens to know other places that do it, let me know because I want to pick their brain on things that they do. Yeah, if you know, if you've heard of a library and know someone doing something like this, type it into the question section of the interface, go to webinar interface and we can uh, share that with everyone. Uh, the other fun thing it does is video calling and I will we will make an attempt to set that up right now. By make an attempt, I mean do. It just requires um, signing out of things and signing into things. So bear with me a second. Okay, Glass, make a video call to Michael Philippi. So we probably should tell everyone that you're actually wearing your Google Glass right now while you're uh, doing this for us. Yes. Of course, yes. we can't see that at the moment yet, but... <laughs> Uh, wake up Google. Okay, Glass, make a video call to Michael Philippi. So I'm wearing the glass and I'm calling the laptop in front of me, which um, will look a little awkward. So what? Uh, I have to mute the mic on both ends mm -hmm. so that I don't end up um, breaking stuff. Yeah, there's a little That's feedback at the beginning, but yep, we can. Yep, and we can see you now. Okay, good deal. <laughs> so what? What the computer sees, so what you're seeing is what my eye is seeing. Um, and when I look back here, I can point out to you. So I look kind of like Star Trek. <laughs> now, for those of you on the line, I just want to say it may look a little choppy coming through, and that is because it's coming through our GoToWebinar interface. But in reality, it wouldn't be that way, of course. It's, a little, it's much smoother in person. So bear with the weird face because if you look down at the bottom here, <laughs> there is uh, the camera. That's my that my fingers in front of, and that is what is seen. 
So when you go and connect it to your cell phone, you can be basically anywhere. Um, the way they've done Google Hangouts uh, in front of the Grand Canyon on um, roller coasters, on hot air balloons, um, a whole lots of things. I'm hearing myself twice slowly, so hold on a second. I need to mm. turn down my volume if I can. Maybe. There. There we go. Uh, okay. Mute that, myself. Uh, yeah, oh, um, that was not coming through on our side, so that's good. No, no, <laughs> we do have not, some, someone did comment that they think Google Hangouts can be a little choppy in their experience as well. So yeah, yeah, I see um, that too. Yeah, and we're also it's um, both Hangouts are sharing the same wireless, which can also kind of mm -hmm. be a bear on the system. Right. Since I don't have Michael at work to call him, because it'd just be a boring office shot. So you just get to see my my living room. <laughs> Uh, so let me hang up this video call so I can. Uh, but it's especially interesting and fun because um, it allows you to show people things they wouldn't necessarily see. So our thoughts are um, when I go to PLA in a couple weeks, excuse me, um, I will take the glass and I'll be able to. Um, record and or broadcast um, things I'm hearing from vendors or from speakers back to the home library without everyone having to come. Um, and so it's just an opportunity for people to see things they wouldn't be able to otherwise. So you have a relative goes to the top of the Empire State Building or the Eiffel Tower or, you know, tall building anywhere. And then they can call you and say, hey, do you have your phone? Yeah. And then you can see what they see. So you can see you know, the beautiful Parisian sunset. Uh, and that's just the really cool stuff. I mean, you can do something as mundane as, um, like, you're a farmer, and you can take pictures of crop damage, um, or you can you know, Google hang out with your crop insurance guy and say, hey, this is what's what. Do you need to come out and see this, or can we go from here? Um, so it really is an immediacy um, to see and from your point of view, not from your, camera's point, not from your cell phone camera's point of view, um, but from what you're actually seeing. It's a little harder to to judge it up, if you will. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's having that, that real-time interaction while you're doing it, too, makes a difference, too. Not just, here, let me send you a picture from my cell phone and then try and tell you what's on it, but here, let me point at exactly the leaf that I'm trying to tell you has the damage or the mold or whatever on it. and making right, it a little right. bit Yeah. Um, let's see. We'll sign back in as me. I showed you the app store. Um, the other thing that's really been neat is um, on my glass, there's a, a section called Explorers, which is for um, anyone who has glass then is uh, instantly added um, into this Explorers community. And so it's questions and uh, comments and thoughts and uh, aha, like, Oh, this is how you extend your battery life. This is how you get a flashlight. Um, someone didn't like the interface, so they redesigned it. Um, and there's the the innovation and the ex exploration that these people are doing is mind-boggling. I guess is the best word for it. I tend to get lost in the the glass community. Um, one of my favorites is the wish list for glass, which is where people just go and say oh, I think this app would be cool, and then developers and even people um, who are just using Glass and also have some developing savvy are like, oh, I just made an app for that. So someone said Snapchat uh, was something they wished would be on Glass. And someone's like, uh, I kind of have a workaround to that, and here's how I did it. And so, excuse me again, because it's all on the Android platform and it's all open source and friendly sherry, um, there's just a lot of people playing and um, sharing and making, trying to make something really, really cool. Um, by far, this is going to be the clunkiest version of glass that it's ever made uh, because it's the first one. And so it's um, kind of that, that hang up where we were invited to try glass 
which is essentially you were invited to spend $1,600 on a piece of technology that's going to be uh, obsolete in a year and a half. But um, the fact that, I mean, it was like the first people who had the iPhone. I mean, the iPhone now versus the iPhone in 2008 is mind-bogglingly slow and awkward looking and, you know, dinosaur. They don't even support that stuff anymore. But the people who had it, they were cool. And it was new and it was shiny and it was fancy. Uh, so I guess any questions? Mm -hmm. um, um, someone did just comment that they've heard the next generation of Google Glass, Google Glass will allow you to have prescription lenses in there. Yes, I think you, maybe you mentioned you. that, yeah. And they also have the, I think you mentioned earlier, the designer frames as well. Designer-ish. Spelling counts. <laughs> so this is, the, this, they have a sunglass look already. It came with some pop-in um, sunglass lenses. Mm -hmm. uh, those came with the ones I have, but like these fancy looking librarian frames and these even <laughs> crazier librarian frames. Yeah. I, <laughs> I just feel that anytime you have cool glasses, it's probably a librarian who's wearing them first. <laughs> um, these are some of the, um, the colors they come in. They come in white and black and the mm. orange and the blue. Um, and so this is the frames, and you can put your own prescription lenses in there. Um, the thing that's uh, different about having prescription lenses is that it doesn't necessarily help you see, um, because if you have if you have uh, issues seeing the small print in front of you, um, that might not necessarily be a problem because the prism uh, on glass actually um, projects the glass screen about five feet in your vision, uh, in your frame of reference. It's really hard to explain mm -hmm. until you put them on, um, but it's not like actually right in front of you. You're not looking at this screen that's right in front of your eye. Um, you're actually looking at something that's kind of projected into your field of vision uh, about five feet out. Uh, Rochelle McPhillips mm -hmm. has tried them on, and she's here, so she mm -hmm. can explain yeah. it too. <laughs> yeah, she is on the line with us. Um, yeah, and I was wondering about that, the projecting it in front of your field of vision, which is cool when you're using it for things, but you had mentioned earlier about the map overlay when that, uh -huh. that gives you directions. I, I just, that, I would be worried about that being distracting, like having um, this out in front of me, a map, and then I'm trying to also pay attention to my driving. Is that just something you have to get used to, or um, is it? It's partially something you have to get used to. The other um, kind of tricky thing is because it's just a projection into your field of vision, if it's a bright day, mm. you're going to lose the entire thing. Um, uh, you won't even see it at all. Oh, yeah. The glass is a black background with white, w with white letters um, to make it easier to see. Um, mm. But even on a bright day, the black is gone and the white is totally... I mean, you can still voice command it and it'll still mm -hmm. read you the instructions. Um, and if you were to look away from the road and say, look at your dash, it would show back up again, easy peasy. Mm -hmm. um, right. But it really can't be, it's not really a distractible driving type of thing because you can't see w the projection, um, mm -hmm. which is actually kind of neat in that mm -hmm. you can still connect and still you know, do all the fun stuff that Glass does, but it can't just distract you because you can't see it. Mm -hmm. That's a nice kind of side effect safety feature, I would guess. Um, I wonder if there is there a way um, then because I still worry you know cause, I mean if it's not so bright you might see it and wonder what's in you know what's in the street or something is that something where you can tell it don't display the map but just give me the audio directions is yes. that have it um, that kind of control can, okay so that'd be good so if yeah, you're worried you can, about it getting it you know suddenly peering and you freak out from seeing it when you're also trying to drive and watch the road you can say just say just give me the audio turn here turn mm -hmm. there yeah mm -hmm. um, the other thing I want to mention is like. These frames here, um, the way that glass is made, um, the the thinker stuff, which is the touchpad, the camera, and the, the lens, prism, what's it here, are connected to everything else by one screw. Um, oh, wow. So you could buy these frames and then swap out what you have. So it's easy to just replace this top band with something else. Um, so ours don't have frames on them, but you could um, trade them out easy enough. 
So that is that is a nice thing is that they built these knowing that people might want to trade in and trade up. Mm -hmm. Here's the, what I mean is that that's the one screw that connects this piece to this piece. So it should be ideally pretty simple to just detach it mm -hmm. and attach it back into a, a different frame. We cool. probably won't do that because we don't care about everyone's poor eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> no, not for the one you're using at the library. Yeah, no. <laughs> not for the library one. Yeah. But when I buy my own pair of Google Glass, I will have some mm -hmm. sweet designer frames with them. <laughs> you could have different frames to match different outfits. It would be awesome. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, the other thing I wanted to show is this is when Google first started doing their uh, their Google Glass project, and they sent it to their X team. You know the 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 dream big think big Google folk. Um, this was Google Glass's first iteration. Uh, this was the computing power. It still put the into the the lens right there, and there's the camera. Mm. But that is a big bulky mess. Yeah, not pretty. <laughs> no, and it'll get smaller. Uh, there's already. Oh, yeah. There's already tech talk about how this is the. I mean, it's this is the largest it'll be. It'll get smaller and sleeker, um, more um, un, unnoticeable, I suppose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it's just really neat, mm -hmm. and I, I wish I could show you more of the cool stuff. No, oh, that's cool. So, which, what kind of? Um, response have you had from the people in your community obviously they wanted to use it and see what it's all about um you've had you had uh, specific events in where in the library and you brought it out into places um response has been really exciting um mm -hmm. because uh people kind of don't believe that you have it uh, <laughs> like mm -hmm. every time i go to the middle school i'm wearing the glass because middle school kids love to play with them mm -hmm. They just love me to put it on their face, and they take one picture, and they're like, oh, man, that was so cool. And they're like, okay, I'm done. I've seen it. I'm, <laughs> I'm okay now. Um, so, but the response is um, kind of one of confusion, I would say, because they, they don't mm -hmm. understand that we got one. They, they can't fathom that the library is letting people play with cool technology that's expensive and new. Um, hmm. But that's the nice thing is that this is kind of one of those – stereotype smashing uh, library purchases where um, you say, yeah, the library owns a pair of Google Glass and you can play with it. And they'll go, don't you guys just do books? And I'm like, heck no, we do. Oh. And then you get to plug all the other great things that you do besides just checking out books. Mm -hmm. Every, all the other great technology and gadgets that they can get from the library. Exactly. Um, let's see, one other thing I can show you. If anybody else does have any questions while well, Jake's moving on here, um, type them into the questions section or tell me to ask me to unmute you and you can ask your question um, or if you have any comment, ideas, whatever. The one, oh, of course, because that's me. Switch. There we go. Uh, I did a middle school book talk wearing glass one day. Um, it's nine minutes of the shakiest video I've ever recorded in my life. I didn't realize <laughs> that I moved my head so much. Um, mm. but I just want to point out that um, for anyone who ever wants to watch someone else give a book talk, um, that is one you can do. And then we've also taken it to um, – we did – I did a morning interview with 1011 News in Lincoln on a Saturday, and um, our local KHAS – or our local um, NBC <clears throat> station – um, has mm -hmm. a noon show that we go on every now and again. Yeah, the 1011 one was the first one that I saw that you had done. Um, and and then I also saw the local one a few days later, and I was like, oh, this is awesome, and that's when I emailed you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Sent an email so at Jake saying, you have to come on the show and do this. You have no choice. The cool thing <laughs> is that there's, from January 21st, there's this interview with Katie. Um, but if you go to KHAS TV, they have the same interview from the 21st from the studio's perspective. Mm. Really? Yeah, neat. I saw there was, you had to share both videos showing your, your view yeah. using, wearing the Google Glass during the whole interview and then their view mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we did a longer 
early morning one plus 100 plus more oh yeah they <laughs> um, we did it at 6 30 in the morning um, but we were doing hangouts so the weatherman um, did the weather and since he has a wireless mic he then wandered around the rest of the studio went up into the control room and this was all on Google Hangout um, and we were um, broadcasting this um, from a MacBook onto one of the screens so they could superimpose both mm -hmm. both things at once. So you're seeing this is the weather and this is what Travis the weatherman is seeing when he's wandering around <laughs> the studio. Um, nice. So it was, it was really neat because then people got to experience both sides of the camera, um, kind of mm -hmm. like you guys did with the Hangout there. Um, and so it's just um, kind of spiffy. Mm -hmm. It does definitely make a difference because we can see you wearing it you know, in the interviews at all, time, all the time, and that's fine. And you've seen a lot of people wearing it, sharing their pictures of themselves wearing it or whatever. But seeing the actual view and of what is actually being seen through the Google Glass does I think bring it a lot, bring it more home to, oh, that's what they're seeing, that's what it's all about. That's pretty cool. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Rochelle did say it's a wild ride. That's her comment <laughs> about it. <laughs> uh, we do have one question. Are most commands by voice that yes, you use all on commands. It? I know there's a little button on the side that people are, you sometimes need to do to turn it on or yes, um, wake it up. Let me get back to pictures. Uh, so this button right here, um, it's silver. Um, that'll, if you push it, it'll take a picture. If you push and hold it, it'll record a video. That's the, the quick cheat there. Um, the, let's see, we'll jump to this picture. This white part here, or this orange part here, um, that is a touchpad. So that's how you wake it up, is to tap it once to wake it up. Um, you can slide forward to see everything that you've done so far. So everything that you Google, everything you take a picture of, everything you record a video of, everything you share to Google Plus or Facebook or Twitter um, is listed on essentially, they call it a timeline. And so in the timeline are cards of what you've done. Um, if you have your email showing up in your, uh, to your glass, that shows up in your timeline. And so you can read your email and respond to it from there. Um, if anyone sends you an instant message, it'll show up in your timeline as an instant message conversation. Um, and so you slide forward to see that, slide backward to um, access their timeline going back, or if you're at the home screen, it'll take you into the settings so you can turn on the Wi-Fi or change the settings um, in terms of battery use, and you can see how much space you have left. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was going to say, this obviously runs on some sort of small battery in there somewhere. How long does that last? Well, if you're using it, um, if you take a fully charged Google Glass to a middle school and let 45 kids take a picture <laughs> or make a video, um, <laughs> it'll get warm and it'll say Google Glass likes it best when it's cooled off. Um, ah. is the first thing. And it will only probably last about three, three or so hours, um, three to four. If that's not bad for taking it out for an event or something. That's a good amount of time, yeah. Right, right. Um, if you are using it only intermittently throughout the day, it'll last, you know, 15 to 16 hours. Google says that it lasts a whole 24, but mm. I think that's only if you just wore it on your face and did nothing else with it. It would, mm. you know, slowly drain over 24 hours. So obviously using that touchpad thing to scroll through and do stuff takes some practice to... Right, yes. Yeah. Um, because it's not intuitive, um, but once you... I think the fun thing is once you tell a middle school kid that you scroll forward to see what you're doing, they're like, oh, okay, and then they instantly process that in. Um, I did the same thing with my boss, Amy, and it took her another five minutes of like, where am I scrolling? What am I doing? Um, scroll, um, is scroll forward to look, scroll back to look, scroll, uh, swipe straight down to, um, to close out everything, essentially, mm -hmm. if you get, you know, six cards into an email, mm -hmm. you can swipe down and it'll take you back to the timeline really quickly. It's um, similar to any new technology. When you get a new phone, you've got to figure out how this one works different from my last one. <laughs> Where exactly. is everything on it? Yeah. Um, now, is it on? connected to a particular... No, you're talking about going through a timeline and whatnot. So does this, your Google, this device connect to a particular... to just the Hastings Public Library's um, Google Plus account? 
Uh, it Do you like sync it or something, or how does that work? It actually connects to my Google Plus account because we used my work email. We are okay. on Google Apps for nonprofits um, email stuff now. Mm -hmm. um, so it actually all syncs to this. You can't um, sync it to a page mm. in much the same okay. way you can't sync it to a Facebook page because there's no direct login. It's all created by somebody. Um, so anything that we take pictures of, um, well, here I'll just show you. The, so these are recent photos taken. So anytime I'm using the glass or we're taking pictures, at the end of the day I can come to my Google Plus page and I will see everything that I've taken a picture of. And um, and, and this is only, only what I see. So the, none of it shares um, with the public, but it all backs up to um, the Google Plus cloud. And then I can share it or download it from there. Right, and then so you can then put it onto the public libraries uh, right. page so that then you can see this is what we're doing at the library with the Google Glass we have. Yep. I see. So it has to be associated with a particular person's uh, yep. profile. Yep. And it, okay. it doesn't really share well outside of that. Hmm. Well, as as I said earlier, they kind of weren't didn't haven't probably thought ahead to people. You, I mean, it's brand new technology. Mm -hmm. They're thinking an individual person getting it and practicing and playing with it. And you, your you and the other public library in Colorado bring it to another level of saying, let's let our library patrons mm -hmm. and users and mm -hmm. our community use it, and that's something completely different. Uh, Rachel does say that I should ask you about the winking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so there is a um, there is a uh, setting on this in 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 glass that has a wink to take a picture. Um, if we go back to these designer frames and oh, where was that picture? Right here. So right on the other side of this, you can see this little black bar kind of. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of obscured by the, the lenses. Mm -hmm. um, but that is a sensor that essentially just can tell if the eye is open or closed. And so you can calibrate, to sh to, you can calibrate that sensor to know when you're winking as opposed to blinking. I was and wondering anytime, about that part. Yeah. Anytime you wink, it'll take a picture, um, oh. which is creepy. So I turned it off because I was showing it off. <laughs> And I was showing it off to students at the high school, so I wink, and it takes a picture, and then I thought, I'm winking at high school students. Probably shouldn't. <laughs> so know your audience, a, yes. <laughs> a possibility, and it's neat, um, because it is, I mean, because that's the beauty, that's the ultimate enhanced free computing, mm -hmm. is that I don't need to say anything, I don't need to touch anything, mm -hmm. I use my eye, it goes. And the nice thing about that is that right now it's winking, but give it a year and a half and they'll have it figured out so people with ALS can mm -hmm. control everything with movements of their eye and their eyelid. Um, so, so people who have no physical or verbal commands can still access computing power and still do stuff. Right. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, the winking may look a little creepy and strange now and people may or may not get it, but the idea that that is where our technology is at right now is still astounding that that is so cool that yeah I winked and took a picture how cool am I <laughs> and I can you just imagine that techno that that's our what our technology can do it's we are living in the future it's awesome <laughs> um, the other fun thing that Google is doing is they recently made a contact lens that checks your glucose levels um, oh yes I read about that mm -hmm. so there is or is not talk that Google Glass and the Google contact lens will one day be the same device. So that's something you can look forward to in the next 15 years. Google Glass contact, lens. contact yeah. lens. Hmm. Yeah. They say they're not going to, but if you've got a, a, you've got a, a flexible, clear processor that will live on a contact lens, then... Someone's going to work on it. Not. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, someone did make a comment when you were talking about the photos. Now you said there's not a lot of um, editing capabilities in Google, on Google Glass itself. You've got to figure out what you're taking as a picture. But they did say that once you have the photos in Google+, Plus, there's editing tools within there. Yes. So um, you could then maybe, if you wanted to, know. afterwards do some editing using the built-in Google+. Plus. Yeah. Yeah. So Google, yeah, Google+, Plus lets you crop. Um, what I did, so... Um, so we went to the middle school for uh, the science fair. So these are the videos that the glass took initially. Mm -hmm. 
um, because they backed up to Google. And then what I did is I downloaded them to um, the MacBook at work and opened up iMovie, imported all the videos, and then cut out basically the part at the beginning where I'm saying, okay, you can talk now. <laughs> uh, so that it goes to the internet, it's less of me and more of science. Mm. Uh, and I'm not certain if that's something you're capable of doing um, in YouTube or on Google+. Um, that was just mm. the fastest way I knew how to do it. Um, but it is um, having this and being able to take pictures uh, and video is really um, kind of opening my eyes to the fact that just creating the content isn't enough. You have to do something with it. You have to crop it. You have to edit it. You have to splice it together. Um, and so it's really pushing me to push um, the rest of my librarians to, to get a computer that's got iMovie, you know, to get a Mac, a big MacBook Pro mm -hmm. you know, sitting in the computer lab so people can come in, bring their video, and run it all together. Um, and do video editing and do all that fun stuff. That's a good idea. Um, and so it's just it's a slippery slope of of awesome technology. Uh, because mm -hmm. now I you wanna... do, yeah, doing something with it afterwards though. Yeah, that's important. And it's not right. only just that you can then do something to make these videos nicer to present, like you said, but get that technology, the video editing software, whatever, in your library for people just to use it for other purposes as well. Exactly. Get them something they can use. Um, so I did. I had a question, and someone else had asked the same question too. And of course, we do need to bring it up because it's out there. Um, privacy concerns. Mm -hmm. um, have I? I'm sure you are aware of it. Have you had any issues with people um, having concerns with what are you doing with that? Are you taping me? You better not be taking my picture. That kind of privacy issues that we know have. Uh, um, we haven't had those problems yet, um, and right now we've kind of worked on the assumption that, um, well, we, we work under the assumption that anything taken in the library is fair game because it is a public space. Um, True, as, like, as any usual know, library event. Yeah, yeah. as any usual library mm -hmm. is. Um, you know, we um, let people know when we're taking the picture, when they're playing with it, that these pictures will go onto our Google Plus page, and they have the mm -hmm. option to say, no, you know, please take that down. Um, cool. And I do let the teachers know when I go to the, the schools and I say, these pictures are going to go to the Google Plus page. You know, let your students know once so they can go look, but then that's also an opportunity for them to come and say, hey, you know, X, Y, and Z kids can't be online. You know, right. take their pictures down. So mm -hmm. we, we make it a very easy and transparent way to, to remove pictures and video if someone doesn't mm -hmm. want them online. Um, but I haven't had anyone specifically be like, what are you doing? I, I haven't had anyone think that I'm taking their video or the picture when I'm not. Um, right. That is certainly a possibility um, that kind of wakes me out because I don't you know, I don't mind I suppose but I think you know a, a heads up is always appropriate when it, it, it is a weird situation I mean people like us and I'm not sure not necessarily everyone but personally me I'm very open on social media and internet things I've got Facebook and Google Plus and Twitter and YouTube stuff and I put stuff out there all the time so I'm obviously not hiding myself from people right. finding out about right. me what I do on the internet but it does I think take an extra step when and you know people are taking pictures all over the place someone's town of vacation and took a snapshot and you might end up in it it happens but for some reason this has pushed some people's buttons of how do I know that that person over there you know it makes me you know a little you know because I think it has to do with they can see that you've got this thing on your face and they know what you're doing you know right. generally people who are trying to be sneaky about it are being sneaky and you don't see them behind the bush and with mm -hmm. the camera that looks like a pen and <laughs> so I think but maybe it's yeah. Yeah. This is the camera that it's looks different. like a pen that you can't even tell. You don't even know it's happening. Yeah. Exactly. But exactly. I also think you're using it in a different way. Some people who are just out there walking around, an individual, and is just walking down the street with it, and they haven't said, it's not a specific event. They just are out there, and you're like, uh, dude, that guy's got that thing. I wonder, you know. But you are specifically, mm -hmm. go as the library, you're using it differently. You're going to a specific event and saying, I'm bringing it and doing this, or you're having mm -hmm. an event in the library and saying, this is what we're doing for the next couple of hours in the library is this event. So you are using it in a different way that you wouldn't just randomly be out there uh, wandering Take around with it. Yeah. yeah. So you might not necessarily incur inc encounter those kind of mm -hmm. stranger on the street saying, turn that off, don't you dare, you know. Yeah, kind of thing. there is yeah. Um, in the Explorer community. There is a lot of stuff about um, 
um, the privacy issues, people sharing their stories about um, using glass. Um, there's some horror stories about people who wear glass to work and then the next day there's this brand new policy about mobile devices and it specifically calls out glass as something mm -hmm. you cannot bring to work because of privacy issues, X, Y, and Z. And, um, Corporate security and secrets. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, there's mm -hmm. a whole bunch of stuff and, and, and some of it um, is really interesting. Some of it's just, you know, kind of disheartening to be like someone's going to be so afraid of new technology that they don't even want to try it or play with it or see it. Yeah, lawyers um, look for the worst scenario <laughs> to try and protect from that. Um, and yeah. now, did you see, I just just announced today um, that Google uh, published do's and don'ts for Google Explorers. I just no, saw a thing on, on Mashable from five hours ago. Um, Google publishes do's and don'ts for glass owners. And there's a page um, of what you should do, uh, common things, explore the world around you, take advantage of the glass voice commands, you know, but then it does say ask permission. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, if you, uh, yeah, there it is. Yep. There it is. And so just, yeah, just earlier today or late yesterday, and um, the article itself just says, yeah, there's do's and don'ts, but if you scroll down at the end, there's a link to the actual uh uh, right there, it says here, yeah. And it's standing alone in the corner of a room, staring at people while recording them through glasses. Not going to win you any friends. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And now someone did ask in the, our um, session, is there any sort of blinking light or anything when it's recording? Is there anything on, like when you have a, a cell phone you can see sometimes? Is there anything that will indicate that you're doing a recording, or is it pretty... There is nothing, nothing. that will indicate that you're doing a recording. Other Are there than, any sort of lights on it that people, yes, uh, there's like so an on, if it's on or something? Um, there's an on light. Oh, uh, mm. I just took a, got rid of the pictures. Hold on. Uh, go back. So on the back of the um, computing piece, I don't care about shock light. <laughs> Images. Let's see, here's my go-to. So on the back here, this little mm -hmm. black dot yeah. is a light that uh, turns white when it's on. Um, the other thing is when you are taking a picture or a video, you can see the screen. Like you can't see it as big as they do, but there is light inside of this prism because it is reflecting from mm -hmm. the from the there into the prism and out into her field of vision. So, so I can someone see looking at you could see that there's something on that little piece yep. there. So, so I could see that you're, you're using it. I couldn't necessarily see that you're taking a, a video of me. No, they just know that I you're looking at something. I mean, it could be right. the Google Plus website. It could be something else, but they can see Correct. when you're actually, Correct. okay, active. But, there, but that is a, a dead giveaway that hmm. something is happening. Um, right. There's a story about a guy who uh, was, he's happily married and he had glass and so he wanted to see um, he, he was doing some experiment where he was sending the guy in with glass and he was using pickup lines on girls. And my first slide is, how did these women not, because it was, he was silently like holding up signs to the webcam in a hangout so this guy could read, you know, so, so he could read the, the pickup line and deliver it. But my thought was, one, it's pretty obvious when you look up to, to see the glass. I mean, you, you kind of look with this spaced out look in your face. Mm -hmm. um, your eyes are focusing exactly. somewhere else, not at the person right. in front of you. Mm -hmm. And you can definitely tell when there is something on the screen. And for the most part, you can even tell what it is when you're that close, like conversation distance. Um, because when I put the glass on other people's faces, uh, I've been doing it so often that I'm really good at reading backwards and tiny now. Uh, <laughs> so when I put it on, mm -hmm. I know that they can see the time. I know that they can read OK Glass underneath that, which is the command prompt to give them the list of options. Mm -hmm. And then I can tell them, you know, read line three, and I know what line three is, and then they say record a video, and then you're like, ta-da, you just made your first content. Um, <laughs> nice. But it's, it's, it's not a mystery. I mean, if you were no. far away, but there's also no ability to zoom right now, so mm. people taking your picture, if they're leering in a corner, they're going to get, you know, a high-def picture of the entire room, and then, you know, cropping and zooming and all that stuff, right. and just want to get a picture of you. So it's not an ideal it's not an ideal creepy stalker. No, you, know. you can't spy on somebody from down the street or anything yet. No. Exactly. Exactly. And who's to say that when it, you know, updates with its next version that it won't be more easy to be abused, but mm -hmm. um, 
that's with any technology, truthfully. I mean, mm -hmm. there's always going to be that one guy that ruins it for everybody. Mm -hmm. Of course. Or gal. Yeah. It's not gender stereotype. <laughs> Uh, of course. Um, yes, and we have another question, which is interesting that I had not thought of. Um, let's see here. Susie Dunn, who's from Southeast Community College here, and um, says, maybe this is off topic, and I don't think it is, but given the sophistication of the glass, have you heard of any ways that the glass has been used to benefit individuals with visual impairments? Can the user control the clarity or image size of what they're viewing? So I know you said you can't zoom in on pictures, but is there something that for people who do have visual issues and can't see very well, like, can they make something large print or zoom in on stuff that they're using it for? Uh, not yet. Um, but again, this is part of that Glass Explorer's um, requests and thing because mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of what Google Glass does right now isn't so much augmented reality so much as you have to engage the, the, engage the device to give you what you want. Um, but I know they're working more toward, there's a, there was a Simpsons uh, episode a couple weeks ago Everyone got a pair of Moogle glass. <laughs> it was their, their sweet uh, knockoff. But it was, mm -hmm. it was, you know, in cartoon form, true augmented reality. So when someone wears the Moogle glass and looks at Homer, it says three DUIs, a cholesterol of 787. Um, and so I know that that's right. something that they're working toward. Um, so the ability to overlay information onto the, the visualization is there. Um, and so I would assume that being able to augment what the lens is seeing and then change that so that you can see it differently through mm -hmm. the screen. Is. Yeah, because there is that software and technology on computers and things, Zoom text and things that are for people with visual impairments and everything getting tinier and having more computing power in a smaller device, that, that would definitely be something that could be... Right. Uh, um, I know that the next, this. their next innovation is that they'll be able to wear the Google Glass on the other side of your face. Ah, OK, that's, yeah. That's their next step, is to be able to put it on the left side if you want on the left side. Why did um, they pick the right side to begin with, is, I wonder? That's a fine question. <laughs> I think they assumed most people were dominant-handed. Right-handed, right yeah. Right, for your right hand. Mm -hmm. um, but there are, I, I'd be curious to see where they put the this on the left side, but kept the computing put that on the right because some people are right-handed but they can't see out of their right eye or any, oh, you know there's yeah. any number of issues where um, like people who are uh, mm -hmm. have a hard time with this because they're the top of their glasses are not usually for something as close as the Google screen in it's the opposite screen. yeah so, yeah it's a little wonky mm -hmm. for them that and wearing glasses on top of glass mm -hmm. or vice versa is also that's been one of the major awkward yeah steps yeah. for it for people who already have glasses yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay any other um that's the last of the questions we had up anybody have any other questions comments thoughts on it anyone else who has seen it or knows anything cool going on out there with google glass i will say that they're still taking explorers um, mm -hmm. yeah you can still get in i went to um one of the rural high schools here uh, a couple weeks ago and was showing it off and then I showed them this just as a hey look you can still sign up and I there were two teachers that um, then went back and applied for the Explorer program one of them didn't get it but mm -hmm. the other one did get an invitation to join the glass explorers so mm -hmm. um, if your library is you know sitting on sixteen hundred dollars in you know memorial money or something and or somewhere else that you have that money coming in yeah State aid money is coming, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Christmas. People um, have all sorts of different. Uh, get, you can get grants for different technology-related things. We give them out here exactly. at the Library Commission. Yeah. So it is possible to get. It is possible to still get them, um, and I think I would recommend that you you do because at the very least you're uh, allowing your patrons to use technology that they won't have the opportunity to play with otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you have those kids that, you know, have been writing code for stuff since they were in sixth grade and now they're, you know, your favorite library aide, you can be mm -hmm. like, hey, you want to write an app for glass and make a million dollars? Of course. And then, and then cut me in on that. So <laughs> I did get you the technology, yep. Yeah. Exactly. Um, 
And the more, I think also, like you said, there's only a couple of libraries, actual libraries we know using it. Yes, you, you saw people at Mailey Midwinter, and there will be, sure, I'm sure, more individuals using it. The more libraries we can get into this Explorer program, the more Google will recognize that that's an, uh, a market, an area to develop more things for, to make it, yes, you can check out Google Glass to a patron to take home and do something with. Um, mm -hmm. They may, you know, up the, uh, improve the, terms and conditions like you said that it's kind of right. unsure right. yet so we're not doing that yeah yeah and we were planning to check them out um, but Amy my director she <laughs> comes from Arapahoe County Library District <laughs> and so she was asking her friends that are still there about glass and they pointed her to the fact that checkout is still a waffly thing mm -hmm. so we actually kind of got saved because someone who read the whole thing and, you know, understood legalese better than I did, was like, right. actually, yeah, checking out's maybe not the best idea. Yeah, let's, that's not, let's hold off yeah. on that for now, yeah. <laughs> you can that do plenty of events, letting, yeah. Letting it leave the building. Without, the, you know, yeah, that, that's the thing that I know a lot of libraries struggle really with, is, it. is it does cost a lot of money, but, you know, libraries are checking out other devices and things, and years ago we were checking out VCRs and other equipment, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same kind of thing. This one is a beta testing device, so you can't really uh, say, oh, well, we need you to pay the replacement cost to get a new one if it breaks. Right. There's right. not a procedure for that. There's not a procedure for that, exactly. Um, yeah. And we're not too worried about breaking it because uh, the I showed it off to the library board one of the first weeks we got it. Uh, the library board got together for their monthly meetings, and I showed them glass, and then... Uh, just last week, I had another meeting with them, um, and someone in the board made the comment that um, the goodwill we've made on just the news coverage alone for Glass has paid for itself. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, all the publicity you know, uh, for the library. The, yeah, the, the the media coverage has been worth the sixteen hundred dollars already. So mm -hmm. it's I good. See, it's fun. You should do it. Mm -hmm. I see one of the don'ts you were mentioning about how you know it it can break or not is don't rock glass while doing high impact sports uh, glass is a piece of technology so use common sense water skiing bull riding or cage fighting with glass are probably not good ideas so yeah, you take that into account when you're getting yourself one of these Absolutely. <laughs> so it doesn't look like any last minute questions have come in we're a little after 11 o'clock um, about an hour we've been going so I think we'll wrap it up um, if nobody has any urgent questions, you can reach uh, Jake at Hastings Public Library. We'll have a link to his the website and everything there. Um, anything else you want to add before we uh, wrap up this morning, Jake? Uh, I do travel. I mean, I have mm. to ask Amy for permission, but I'm going to um, a school this Friday that's outside of the county. Um, this was wondering, yeah, you're the only one in Nebraska. Would other libraries in the state be able to ask you to come and, yeah? Yes, absolutely. It might be, um, you might have to split mileage with, work with the public library here, but mm -hmm. um, I would certainly love to bring them out and show them off to any library that was interested in trying them out. Um, I, I think it's, you get technology in, in people's hands and then they'll, they'll come up with something to do with it. And so if you can inspire mm -hmm. your kids, or your, your adults to try something, then uh, maybe that'll be the ability for you to then get money and buy your own. So. If you need me to come cool. see you and bring them, just give me a call. Contact Jake at the Hastings Public Library. Cool. All right. Thank you very much, Jake. That was very cool. As I said, I as soon as I saw you on the news, I sent you an email and said you must <laughs> yes. come on. You you yeah, you you have to do this. <laughs> and um, I'm glad thank you, you for did. Yeah. Us, uh, yeah. Let's talk. All right. So I am going to. Um, Take back presenter control here. Switch over to my screen. Uh, trying to clean up things a bit. All right. There we go. Oh, this is the uh, Google Glass do's and don'ts that they released that I was looking at here. So um, thank you, everyone, for attending this morning. Um, the show has been recorded, is being recorded, so when it is done... Um, We'll have the recording available, and I'll send you all the link for that. Um, all the URLs and things that uh, Jake was mentioning that we are talking about, I'll also have included there in the show notes as well. 
So that will wrap it up for this morning's Encompass Live. I hope you'll join us next week when it is our monthly Tech Talk with Michael Sowers. He is the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Once a month he comes to the show to share any of the tech news of the month and sometimes to have a guest speaker on. And this month he has um, Gary Wolf, uh, founder of an or of uh, the quantified self, um, self-tracking, personal data systems, changing your ideas about public knowledge. So something that I know absolutely zero about. Michael mentioned it to me. I'm like, I don't know, but it sounds cool. So um, he will be on the show next Wednesday, so do sign up for that. Also, we are on Facebook, so if you are a big Facebook user, definitely go ahead and like us over there on Facebook. You'll get notifications when a new show is added. Um, a reminder, join us right now to jo this, join this morning show. When the recordings are available, we post them up there as well. So if you are a big um, Facebook user, like us there to keep up with what you're doing, with what we're doing. Other than that, other than that we um, will wrap it up for this morning. Thank you very much, and see you next time.